I bow unto you all. We are meeting in another beautiful session of grade 11, science chapter number 3 as per the Sri Lankan government school syllabus. The mixture is the one what we have been learning for the second time and we will understand the mixture properties in this beautiful lesson one more beautiful time. At the end of the session, you will understand how the components are distributed in a mixture. How the components are distributed in a mixture. Before getting into this session, you have to remember what we learned about mixture in the definition. Mixture can be defined as Mixtures are matters consisting of two or more components which are not chemically combined and can be separated by physical method. Those, that is the definition definitely we learned about it. So mixtures are matter consisting of two or more components which are not chemically combined and can be separated by physical method. So let's understand in this session how the components are distributed in a mixture. Let's get into the subject. Let's do an activity which is activity 3.13. For that we need a beaker, clay water, a piece of cloth just like this. We need a beaker, clay, we need one clay out of those four, water, a piece of cloth. Take about 500 milliliter of water into a beaker and then after that add 10 grams of clay soil to it and stir well. And allow to stand still for about one minute. And then after that, after mixing the clay and the water, 500 milliliter water, you're keeping that one after stirring it well. You're keeping it for one minute to get the things firm and mixed well. After one minute of time, then filter the muddy colored water into another beaker using a piece of cloth. You're taking the second beaker and you're keeping the piece of cloth on top of it and allow your first of all you're filtering it just like that once you're getting filtered allowing to stand still for about an hour and then after filtration you're keeping that one for one hour and see whether the muddy color is uniformly distributed throughout the solution once you have filtered it you have to check whether the muddy color, that brown or beige color, which is uniformly distributed throughout the solution. Now, let's see the component. See if the clearness of the solution is similar from top to bottom. See that one when you are keeping something like that. In front of you, it seems like there is very clear and there is no any differences. But when you're looking at very closely how it is happening, let's see. Now in your next step, taking a piece of metal sheet with a lustrous surface as shown in figure. You see that one? This particular metal sheet is shining. That is lustrous surface. That is right. Take two identical drops of the solution from two places like A and B with a pipette or glass rod. Using this kind of a pipette or glass rod, you are taking two dots from these different places. Then Put them on the spots marked as A and B respectively on the piece of metal and let them vaporize. When you are making it hot, the plate with the candle, it will get vaporized. The watery type will go to the air and it will get dry. Okay, Now check to see which water sample contains more residual matter. Let's understand that one in a zooming way. Now. This activity leads to the following conclusion in the mixture formed by dissolving clay in water. Now the color transparency is different from place to place. Look at these two. The amount of clay particles in a unit volume is different from place to place. Now you put two drops of water from A and B. But if you see very closely, the particles are different. The particle is not similar in one place to another place. Do you see that one in front of you? You definitely can see that in front of you. Now this portion has a different design. 
and this particular portion has a different setup those are the amount of clay particles in a unit volume is different from place to place different from place to place let's do another activity now here we are going to take a beaker water common salt a piece of cloth and then after that we are going to start it taking about 250 milliliter of water into a beaker and at about 10 grams of pure salt into it then after that stir it and till the salt is dissolving very well just like this now the salt is gone and it is mixed well with the water 200 milliliter water now what you're going to do is and filter the solution with a piece of cloth like we did we are filtering it again in this session also allow to stand still for about one hour and see whether the clearness of the solution is equal from places to place take a piece of metal sheet with a lustrous surface as shown in the figure one more time in this particular activity also now take a two identical drops of the solution from two places like a and b with a pipette or glass rod as we did in our earlier experiment now here place them on the spots marked as a and b respectively on a piece of metal and let them vaporize you're keeping a candle and letting it to vaporize check to see which water sample contains more residual matter now let's understand in this solution how the things are going following conclusions can be drawn from the above activity in the mixture formed by dissolving salt in water you see this one the transparency is equal throughout the solution also if you see closely the amount of salt particles in the unit volume of the solutions is equal throughout the solution now look at this place and the other place also it is same unlike in your previous experiment this particular particle looks same in both the places now pay your attention again to the mixture you studied in activities now according to the nature of the distribution of component mixture can be divided into two categories in our previous one and the later experiments mixture in which the composition of the component is uniform throughout the mixture that is the first one mixture prepared by dissolving common salt in water and the next one is mixture in which the composition of the component is not uniform throughout the mixture for example mixture prepared by dissolving clay in water now we can come to a conclusion as the mixture in which the components are separated from one another are called heterogeneous mixture and the mixture which whose composition of the components are uniformly distributed throughout are known as homogeneous mixture we came to know the definition of homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures now we know how the components are distributed in a mixture and what are the names given when those are different and same homogeneous and heterogeneous let's learn about it about those things in our next session until i meet you in another session bye bye take care of yourselves